As creativity evolves in the marching arts, physical demand also increases. Everyone is now running, jumping, lunging, squatting, and doing really cool visuals with their equipment on, yet there are a lot of people who aren't physically prepared to do any of that. A lot of these moves require lower body strength. So in this video, I'm going to show you one of the best lower body exercises for building that strength, the barbell squat. Let's start off with a short explanation of how to perform a barbell squat. Then we'll go into important details, cues, and extra equipment that can help you perform the best squat possible. Grab the bar with a comfortable grip, then get under the bar and place it on your upper traps. Pull your shoulders and elbows back and down to create a rigid and stable shelf for the barbell to sit on. Think bending the bar with your hands and upper back. Hold this tension throughout the whole squat. Take a deep breath to brace your core and stand up. Take a few steps away from the rack and set your comfortable stance width. Plant your feet to the ground and maintain balance by evenly distributing the weight throughout the entire foot. Take a deep breath and brace your core once more before the descent. To perform the squat, start by slightly hinging forward, think pushing your hips back. Then descend down to at least parallel, which is where your hip crease is parallel to the top of your knee joint. Allow your knees to travel past your toes and travel the same direction as your toes during the descent. Remember to maintain balance throughout the entire foot. Do not let the heels or toes rise off the floor. Once you are down, drive your legs into the ground and stand up while having your hips and your chest rise up at the same time. Do as many repetitions as needed and re-rack the bar when finished. And now you know how to squat, but don't leave just yet. There are still a number of things we have to discuss in order to get the most out of your squat workout. Before performing the squat, it's important to set up your rack and safety heights. We highly recommend you perform barbell squats at a rack that has safety catchers. You'll never know if you'll need it. Maybe have a spotter or two if you plan on pushing yourself that day. Setting your rack height is very simple. You set it too high, you'll have to reach for the bar and it can get caught on the holder. Set it too low and you'll have to use extra energy just to lift the bar up and off. It'll take a few tries to find your rack height. The best rack height should allow you to do the least amount of work to lift the bar up and out. For the safeties, it is best to set them up a few inches from the bar while you are at the lowest point of your squat. Not everything goes to plan, so it's very important to have something to save you from getting crushed by the weight. The type of shoe you wear to squat in can greatly affect the performance of your squat. A great rule of thumb is to find a shoe with a hard and non-compressible sole. These type of shoes allow you to be planted to the ground to create a stable base for balance, control, and power. See these running shoes? You want to avoid any shoe that has a compressible sole, especially like these running shoes where the sole is very soft and squishy. Two popular shoes that can be used are the Old School Vans and the All Star Converse because of their very hard and flat sole. Another great type of shoe are a pair of squat or weightlifting shoes. These are nice and sturdy and have an elevated heel to shorten the range of motion of your squat. You may also want to try some minimalist shoes. These usually only have a thin insole and a thin rubber sole between your feet and the ground. This allows you to be as close as possible to the ground for maximum control and balance. How you place your thumb on the bar can affect how you control the bar while it's on you. Wrapping the thumb around the bar allows you to hold it in place, but it adds tension to your wrists. Placing your thumb on top of the bar allows your wrist to be straight, which helps keep tension off the wrist, but it makes it a bit harder to keep the bar locked on you. The distance between your hands are just as important. If you have a wide hand placement, it puts less pressure on your shoulder joints, but adds pressure to your wrists. If you have a narrow hand placement, it does the opposite. Less tension on the wrists, more on the shoulders. The distance between your feet will alter the way you perform the squat the most. The wider you go, the more hip dominant the squat becomes. This shortens the range of motion, allows the knees to move less, and put more tension on the hips. The narrower you go, the more leg dominant it will become. The range of motion will increase, the knees will have to pass more over the toes, and it forces the quads to do more work. Usually you'd want to meet in the middle of too wide and too narrow, but different anatomies mean different preferences. Good thumb and hand placement will allow you to create that sturdy shelf we mentioned earlier, and a good stance will allow you to produce the most control and power as possible. So experiment around with your extremity placements to find your best position for the squat. 
Bracing is the process of creating tension in the core muscles to promote stiffness and stability to keep the spine supported and protected from any unwanted spinal motion. To do this, take a deep breath in through your diaphragm and push it down and hold that tension. An easy way to tell if you're bracing correctly is by placing your hands on top of your hips or on your obliques. Then take a deep breath through your diaphragm and feel the front, sides, and back of your torso expand out. Make sure you brace before you unrack and before you descend in the squat. You may breathe out at the top of each rep, but be sure to brace again before doing another rep. Before we finish this video, let's go over some information about the equipment you'll be using and some supportive gear that may help you squat more weight. Most barbells you see in the gym are about 45 pounds or 20 kilograms. There are lighter bars, but try to stick with these. Most bars have knurlings on the sides and on the center of the bar. The knurlings purpose is to provide grip to the lifter. The side knurlings are for your hands and the center is for your back. Keep in mind that not all racks and safeties are adjustable. We recommend finding one that is adjustable, but sometimes you just gotta work with what you have. If you prefer a thumb and hand placement that adds more pressure to your wrist, wrist wraps could be a good investment to support them. A weightlifting belt can help you create more abdominal pressure to get an even tighter and stronger brace. There are many type of belts, but I recommend getting a prong or lever belt for lifting weights. Knee sleeves give extra support to the knees, but it should be the last assistive gear you would get because it mostly helps you at the bottom of the squat versus the top. I recommend looking into neoprene sleeves if you want the most assistance possible out of the bottom of the squat. We don't realize how much lower body strength is actually needed in marching band until you are thrown into the activity. Let's change that and make lower body strength the standard instead of the result. And one of the best ways to do that is to get under a bar and squat. Thank you. 